The Kerbal Scuffed Program 3, Kevin's Wrath. Sponsored by World of Warships. Ship, boat, if you will. Is he gonna say, is he gonna say the hello again line? Is he gonna say it? Hello again. I'm back in KSP. Nice. But why am I here? On Elu. That's kind of far away, isn't it? A little bit. Yeah. It is. <laughs> Worse, it looks like we're stranded here for the foreseeable future. Mm-hmm. Great. But how did this all happen? What led to our stranding on Elu? And where is Kevin? Poor Kevin. All good questions. Well, it all began when- <laughs> The cut. Hello again, gents. Welcome back. Today, we're yet again back in KSP. In this episode, we'll be making great strides in not only sending Kerbals far away, but keeping Kerbals far away. Oh. In the last episode, the bounds of science and discovery were pushed very far. New technologies were discovered, large missions were sent to the far reaches of the solar system, mm -hmm. and society has advanced significantly. This, however, came at a cost. <laughs> Many Kerbals were unfortunately turned into a grey puff of dust in oh. the name of progress. Mm -hmm. but, Jeb. As it is, as it is with these kinds of games, sacrifices are necessary. Bill. Bob. Val, and in spirit, Urk and Obson, because I'm absolutely <laughs> not getting them back. No. Sorry, Urk. Oh. They've all given the greatest possible sacrifice for the sake of the program. But we still have a long way to go. They got mad science Remember, out of them. Our goal is not to explore our planetary neighbors, but to explore our stellar neighbors. Specifically, Proxima Centauri B. In this episode, we'll be expanding our presence by building planetary bases. I'm so used to be here. I'm so used to hearing it Centauri. I'm not used to hearing it Centauri. It blows my mind every time he says it. All over the place. Not the dingy little ones we built last episode either. This time around, we're going for big lads. Oh. They won't just be bases. They'll be complexes with their own power generation, crew quarters, mining operations, <laughs> and even launch them. <laughs> our first nice. target is Minmus. So. Let us begin. Gentlemen, this video is sponsored by- he, he, he didn't show the lettuce. He said lettuce. He showed the, the word, but he didn't actually show lettuce. It's it, it's progress. A world of boat. I mean, boat? Have you spent your whole life on a stinky land dwelling club? Are you itching for intense violence? Well, oh boy, guess what? I think it's time for you to hop on the computer, download World of Boat for free, and send some high explosives at the Japanese. Destroyers, battleships, cruisers, and aircraft carriers. A massive 400 warships and 44 million players to send to the bottom of the ocean. But wait, there's more. The game is now partnering with Legendary Entertainment on a collaboration to bring Godzilla vs. Kong to World of Warships. What does that mean for you? Moke. Moke? Pick a side, shit lizard, <laughs> or giant gorilla, and unlock special rare camos, ship skins, and even... Moke on the boat. Moke on yeah. the boat. That's right, baby. He roars. Download using Awful. the first link in the description, and use either Godzilla or Titan Kong for your promo code. Forget about Godzilla, though, because Godzilla is a shit lizard. Enter code Titan Kong for 300... <laughs> Those are some, uh... <laughs> Those are some strong words. That's somebody that grew up with the originals. The balloons. The One million credits, five days premium, the USS Charleston, ten monkey-themed camos, or Godzilla camos if you're a shit lizard fan, <laughs> USS Smith, or Taichibana if you're a shit lizard fan, and three Godzilla vs. Kong ship crates. Gentlemen, you must act fast. This is an extremely limited event, so get your giant boat gorilla before it's too late. Monk. 31st of May. Monk. <clears throat> Back to the video. Let us begin. So, Minmus. We're going to need a few modules for our base to be fully operational. Mining, refining, habitation, and a launch pad. Yeah. But let's back up for a minute. Why build a base on Minmus? Good question. Hello, class. It's me, Frog Guy. In this <laughs> lesson, we're going to learn about drag. Aerodynamic drag. Drag is a force that acts in the opposite direction that you're moving. If I, I actually thought... Wait. Is drag the actual scientific name for it? I thought there was another name for drag, or at least what he's referring to as drag. Move to the right then I'll experience a force to the left. Yeah. It slows stuff down. Know what we want for high-speed rocket flight. Uh-huh. Makes sense. Or is it? Oh. Yeah, most of the time. But parachutes <laughs> are very useful because they can create huge amounts of drag when you want them to, slowing a speedy craft down to not so drag. speedy okay. speeds. But most of the time, drag is bad. So how okay. do we get rid of it? Well, if we can find a way to lower these guys on the right, it'll result in this guy on the left also being lowered. Uh-huh. Maths. Now let's say, hypothetically... I, I mean, that's just balancing an equation. No drag whatsoever. Since all the terms on the right are multiplied together, and we know that anything times zero is zero. Is zero yeah. If any one of these numbers here is zero... Is zero. The other will be zero, right? Then the whole thing is also zero. Yeah. These guys on the right here can't really be zero. No. 
it must, would... be, it must be greater than zero. I mean, our craft is a one-dimensional line. The drag coefficient can never really be zero. And uh -huh. if you made velocity zero, well... You wouldn't go anywhere. Yeah. Last we could change would be fluid density. Now, this can actually be zero. Uh -huh. Now, I wonder, where is fluid density zero? Kevin. I mean... So... <laughs> he has a... <laughs> the return of Kevin, but not quite. Come on. Please tell me. Is Ro, by the really? way? Really? No one? Guys, come on. It's Minmus, you fucking idiots. I've had enough. God, why would you pay attention to what I... Fluid density <clears throat> being zero. Yeah, Minmus. There's no atmosphere. Meaning, okay. drag is zero. Yeah. Good spot for a base, don't you think? Okay. Yes. <laughs> so we want to build a base. What do we launch first? Simple. Three things at the same time. Because otherwise we'd be here for far too long. The main habitation module called Djibouti. Djibouti, the beam sections on the side called Djibouti beam section, and the crane. Except the crane didn't work, so we went for this thing. The mm -hmm. amazing, the incredible, the big nuts. <laughs> loud does not equal funny. Also loud equaling funny. Big nuts will attach the beam section to the habitation module. So, let's launch. Three, two, one, go! Yeet! I love that he did actually go to college for engineering. It's actually really good. I'm going to try to tune down some of these music-only segments so YouTube advertisers and copyright don't get uh, a little upset at me because I've been getting upset recently. So I'm trying to cause as little uh, contention as possible with copyright and advertisers. Bear with me. Even if it's fair use, they've just been getting a little rough. Loud always equals funny. Not necessarily, not inherently. But in cases like this, loud does equal funny. Rod. <laughs> And they're all here. After several minutes of futzing around with big nuts big and a nut. couple of cracking encounters, the beam sections were fully assembled. So, what next? Well, we're close to completely out of funds which are needed for expanding the base. So what do we do? A. Collect some easy money by completing contracts. Mm -hmm. B. Sell off some science and reputation for a quick fund boost. Or C. Liquidate all capital assets and divert the funds into a multi-billion dollar joint Please venture with Amin Hassan Nasser, <laughs> president of Saudi Aramco Petrochemicals, to build the largest, most powerful, and most profitable chemical refinery ever built. Oh, I mean, that, that is an option as well. Just liquidate capital, go ham into a venture. Yeah, I mean, I guess that makes sense. Risky, but effective. I think the answer is pretty clear. After an hour of turning ore into monopropellant, or cash into more cash, we have arrived at 5 million funds. More than enough to make the rest of the modules for the base. Alternatively, open up an OnlyFans. All I'm saying is 5 mil is 5 mil. I mean, 5... be a lot I do for 5 mil. However, <laughs> allegedly, it turns out where we put the base is quite important. There are two main resources we need for it to function. Ore, which is used to make fuel, and metal ore, which is used to make metal, which is used to make rocket parts, which is used to make rockets. Mm -hmm. Our current spot has ore, but no metal ore. Uh -huh. So I did some prospecting, found a good spot, built a sky crane, flew it to Minmus, picked up Djibouti, Yoink. and flew it about 20 kilometers east. Our new spot <laughs> is rich in both ore and metal, uh -huh. but it's not flat and tends to cause a yeah. problem. Yeah. To Lower the base, the we need a drill rover, a refining rover, Lots of these attacher things that are unnecessary if you aren't stupid. And finally, the launch pad. That are unnecessary if you aren't stupid. Joke's on you, I'm a dingus. So I'm slightly, uh, stupid, but slightly to the left. Only fans went. I keep getting asked this. I don't know, maybe I'll make one. I don't know, I don't know what I'd post. That's the issue. <laughs> Kinda need to just do it to take the name so no one else takes my name. Yeah, connecting these would be a pain to me. I mean, people can absolutely do it like that. Like, he's doing it just fine. I would have issues with this. I am not subtle or graceful or dexterous. And there we go. In celebration, we build a fuel tank and a dish. Yeah. And a station. Why? Well, as my new Saudi friends would tell you, oil. Because we can. <laughs> this Minmus base will be our new point of rocket launching. And our first mission from it will be... Ace 2. Gilly. 
If you think Minmus's 0.05G is far too much gravity, try Gilly with its 0.005G. Oh. That's 10 times lower. That's Not a only is the gravity lower. incredibly low on Gilly, but it's quite far away. So being able to build things there is a big fat dub. This time yeah. I'm going to send a single rover that can do all of the functions of the Minmus base, but badly. This rover but will badly? be the start point for yet another base. Its name? One. One. <laughs> Instead of launching four from Kerbin with a huge annoying launch vehicle, we can simply build it on Minmus and ship it to Gilly from there. Not only will this be easier, but it also won't cost any funds at all. Mm -hmm. Not that matters. After uh, a yeah. painful construction process, it's on the pad, fueled up, and ready to launch. So, let's launch. The, the soundtrack he's done is kill. You could tell he's really doing a lot. Uh, he upgraded his kit for this. It sounds good. It looks good. It's it, it's very functional. Like there's, it's really cool seeing going from episode one into two and now to three. Just how big the quality has increased. It's actually really cool. I love seeing evolution of styles and how people find their niches. It's awesome. There we go, boys. One has landed. As a test, I quickly whip up a small science rover, build it up, and drive it around. Zoom. However, around this time, this started happening. What? Why? <laughs> <laughs> Repeatedly. <laughs> so... I switched to the minimus base, and then this happened. Uh, oh. Uh, <laughs> oh. Wait a minute. That's oh. not. Oh, shit. <laughs> That's not I don't think that's supposed not to cool. happen. Luckily, I had turned quick saving and reverting back on because of this exact bullshit being a possibility. Yeah. So the bases weren't gone, but they were kind of useless in this state. Wiggle. Dang. <laughs> Wiggle. <laughs> so for the next base, I decided I would base three. For this base, I've made the executive decision to launch it from Kerbin. I had a plan for this particular vessel. What? And it was big. Luckily, our boys at Saudi Aramco had been pumping and dumping non-stop for the past several months, netting us a very, mm, very large amount of funds to work with. 26 million to be exact. Excellent. This would be necessary, as this next base would be quite large. So large, in fact, that 26 million wouldn't actually be enough money. Uh -huh. Now, we could have continued to convert Kerbin's crust into monopropellant until we've reached the planet's core, but that would be boring. And I know we can do better. What we needed to do was find a different resource to sell. You see, mm -hmm. our great, strong partnership <laughs> took boring old ore and converted it into boring old monopropellant. Right. This would be the most efficient conversion without mods, but we have mods, so let's use them. Oh. Behold, the different resources of KSP Interstellar. There are a lot of these, and some of them are worth quite a bit of cash. Uh -huh. But one stands above the rest. Antimatter. Oh. One kilogram of this stuff is worth a ridiculous 108 million funds. Uh -huh. However, we can do even better. Oh. This is the diamagnetic antimatter container, uh -huh. which doesn't just store anti-protons, but full anti-hydrogen, uh -huh. which you can store with much higher density. In fact, right here, you're looking at 1,000 kilos or one ton of anti-hydrogen, which is worth 108 billion funds. Right. Now that is a lot of dollar. That's a dollar. A lot of dollar. So <laughs> let's partake in the ultimate drug run and go fill it up. But first, what is antimatter? Oh, this is one of those weirdly contested subjects Hello, in science. Class. Welcome back. Particle physics. Sounds complicated, but it's really not that bad. Firstly, we begin with water. Right. If you were to zoom in really close to water, Atoms. you wouldn't see anything. But if you could see something, you'd see water molecules. Lots of water molecules. Oh, we're going molecules before we go to atoms. Okay. Let's pick one of these molecules and look at it even closer. At this scale... Oh, boy, I remember this. Yeah. Oh, it's been a while since I've looked at actual orbitals. Man, electron orbitals are wild. I'll tell you what. Because hydrogen has one electron in, in its orbital, and thus it binds it. Oh, I wasn't bad at science. I just didn't like my chemistry teacher. She didn't teach it. No, She taught in a weird way. Scale, you can see that water is made of two hydrogen atoms and one oxygen atom. Yeah. H2O. Yeah. Let's ignore the... Hydrogen, it's two hydrogens and an oxygen. That's what the subscript is. Oxygen for the time being, and zoom into one of the hydrogen atoms. At this scale, we see that the hydrogen atoms... Electrons are going around. Protons and neutrons should be in the center. ...self is made of one proton and one electron. Protons have mass and a positive charge. Yes. And electrons have almost no mass and a negative charge. Yeah, that's why they're outside. Protons and electrons, and also neutrons, which have no charge, yep. make up matter. If we have a close look at oxygen, we see that it itself is made of eight protons, eight neutrons, and eight electrons. Yeah. So where does antimatter come in? Well, it's basically the opposite of regular matter. 
antiprotons have negative charge, and anti-electrons, which are actually called positrons, have, positives. have okay. a positive charge. Interesting. This means that antiparticles and regular particles are attracted to each other. Uh -huh. So, what happens when they touch? Mass amounts of energy is created. Well, mass amounts of energy, because energy cannot be created nor destroyed, mass amounts of energy get released. Annihilation. All their yeah, mass I gets converted to energy by Einstein's famous equation, E, e. equals mc squared. E being energy, m being mass, and c being the speed of light, which is squared. Yeah. C squared happens to be this number, 9 with 16 zeros on the end. So if you had 1 kilogram of antimatter and mixed it with 1 kilogram of regular matter, you'd have this number of joules. That's a lot, a lot of, of energy. Or joules, joules as a uh, unit of measurement for energy. 21 megatons of TNT. Yep. In one kilo. Pretty good stuff. Which means our lovely one ton of antimatter is the equivalent of 21 gigatons of TNT. Yeah. Very big. But still 5,000 times less than the Dino Destroyer asteroid. Uh huh. Now that was a big boy. Big, thick, if you will. Back to the challenge at hand collecting antimatter. Challenge number one. You can produce antimatter in Kerbin, but it's difficult and slow. Mm. Not ideal. No. The other way to get antimatter is through using a collector. In space, there's actually a fairly large amount of antimatter just floating around. If you're smart, I actually need to dig up. I need to see what advancements we've made in regards to antimatter theory and science. It's been way too long since I've actually delved into modern science on that. But you can use strong magnetic fields to capture this antimatter and store it. This is great but it only works in space and works best near strong magnetic fields where there are lots of particles whizzing around. Kerbin mm -hmm. has a magnetic field, but it's quite weak. Yeah. So do all planets in KSP. But they all suck compared to our big green friend, Joule. Suck. At exactly 9,000 kilometers in altitude, a perfectly circular zero degree orbit, you can get the high orb, if you will. Highest possible antimatter flux. You can also stack up collectors and start collecting in the tens of grams per hour. Tens of grams. Big stuff. Big money. However, there is another problem with this method. The collectors can only collect antiprotons, not positrons, mm -hmm. which can only be created in a cyclotron. Mm -hmm. So we need lots of collectors, a cyclotron, a power source, generator, radiators, and of course, engine for getting to Joule. Behold, the Warren Buffett. Let's strap it to the most powerful rocket ever built and send it up. <laughs> Making sure that hydrogen monoxide needs to be banned. Anti science, to, it, like, I, I hate that people just think that way. Like, they, they don't realize they don't realize what they're saying, and that's really an issue. Where ignorance is, in fact, the worst thing you can have. Like, H2O, you mean what? <laughs> uh, great channel for this, but I, I'll have I, I gotta dig back into it. I know most everyone's concerned with uh, simulation theory, at least in public perception. Once Joule, we place ourselves at 9,000 kilometers, start producing positrons, and begin the lengthy collection process. I'm pretty sure that this is going to get claimed, so I'm, I'm trying real hard not to. Mm, that is me that's profit right there. Many. <laughs> and after a mere six years of spinning around the big green boy, the container was filled with a ridiculous one ton of antimatter. Nice. Time to bring it back to Kerbin. Oh, it's going to crash. You know, it looks weird, but I'm sure it's incredibly functional. The issue is that I'm pretty sure it's going to get claimed, so I lower the volume to prevent it from, you know, getting cut and monetization issues. Because YouTube has not been playing nice the past few months. Other creators can attest. After another two years in space, the massive bounty of antimatter is finally back. So we recover the vessel and are rewarded with 96 billion funds. Nice. Uh-oh. I heard, I heard the cops. Pretty good. Now that we will Must never have money problems again, we can begin construction of our largest project yet. Big? The Joule spacecraft. Since it's going to be so large, launching it in one go would be infeasible. So instead, the program has decided to launch it They're in... They're launching it in installments and, inst and uh, making it in orbit. Interesting. ...several smaller chunks and perform what is known in the business as orbital assembly. Yeah. This would require many launches, but once assembled, we would have a real big boy in space. Not just any big boy either. This would be a proper spaceship. Lots of fuel in these spherical tanks, 
this big fusion engine for high efficiency, a nuclear reactor for power, a ring centrifuge particle accelerator thing that looks cool, and a lander for collecting surface science. But before we launch, learn time. Let's rewind the tape a little bit. This big fusion engine for high efficiency. What do I mean by this? Mm -hmm. What makes a rocket engine efficient? A fish? Mmm. That's a really good question, actually. This is going to keep me up at 3 a.m. Efficient. First of all, let's look at a small example. These two rockets are both exactly 7 tons and have the same amount of fuel. Right. The only difference between them is the engines they use. This one uses a conventional liquid fuel engine, and okay. this one uses a nuclear engine. Mm -hmm. If we burn all the fuel in both rockets, which one will be going fastest at the end? Nuclear. The nuclear engine. Obviously. Why else would we put a nuclear reactor in space? You dumb. So why is this? <laughs> you dumb. Conservation of momentum. Uh-huh. You may remember back in episode one when I asked Kevin about Newton's third law. Every action has an equal and opposite reaction. Right. The rocket engine expels hot, hot gas backwards very fast, which imparts an equal and opposite force on the rocket. Which, which starts to get you moving, yeah. ...to accelerate. If you throw the hot, hot gas back even faster, then you get more force for the yes. same amount of fuel. This is exactly what the nuclear engine is doing. It uses a nuclear reaction in its core to heat up a gas to incredible temperatures that are much higher than what normal chemical rockets can achieve. Mm -hmm. This hot 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 gas expands more than regular hot hot gas, which gives it higher exhaust velocity and thus higher efficiency. Mm -hmm. So what about our futuristic fusion rocket? How does that work? I don't know. I don't know. But what I do know <laughs> is that it uses a nuclear fusion reaction to release lots of energy and then shoots hydrogen through it to get its thrust. Efficiency is measured in specific impulse, which is measured in seconds. Higher seconds is better. Mm -hmm. But why seconds? 400 seconds would mean that a rocket engine with 100 kilograms of fuel would produce 100 kilograms of thrust for 400 seconds before it ran out of fuel. Okay. The best chemical rockets can do about 400 seconds of specific impulse. The nuclear rocket engine in stock KSP does 800 seconds. So it's and the iron engine can do 4,000 seconds. Ooh, wow. This is still baby shit, though. The fusion oh. engine that we've been talking about can do 15,500 seconds in high thrust mode. It's just, you have a lot more time, a lot more thrust. And 27,000 seconds in the most efficient mode. But we can do even better. The best engines can do 100, even 200,000, with the very best able to do a ridiculous 2 million seconds of specific impulse. What is 2 million seconds converted? That is... 2 million seconds, minutes, days, hours. I'm very curious about this, actually. So 2 million seconds is 23 days, about uh, 0.7 months. Yeah, so it's just under a month. It's about two-thirds of a month, just a little bit over. Uh, 33,333.3 repeating minutes, 555.556 hours. I'm assuming that's rounded up. Uh, 23.148 days, 3.307 weeks. Long time. These engines are so powerful that they can realistically accelerate the craft to a significant fraction of the speed of light. Yeah. Very nice. Very nice. Anyway. Very good. Back to the dual mission. We've got a few modules to launch. Propulsion, command, centrifuge, reactor, habitation, labs, new labs because the old ones are bad, and the lander. <laughs> the old ones are bad! So, let's go. I do like his choice in music, though. His music bits in this are actually really great. YouTube has just changed over the past few years, and I'm not too familiar with it. I'm trying to have as little muted on modern videos as possible. If you go to some of the older videos, I've had to mute specific, like, significant chunctions, uh, chunks of videos. So I'm trying to avoid that. But no, I guess is, there's a lot that goes into playing KSP. I, I do see why people really love it, and the fact that you can do Orbital Assembly in this is actually kind of cool as well. So... I mean, mods, the fact that the mods are this intensive as well. Maybe I'll get it one day. Maybe I'll try it. One, I heard two was kind of interesting at launch. I don't know what the state two is in right now, but... Uh, serve in a bit. Oh, you're good. Yeah, I, I'll probably play this at some point. I won't be good, and I'll probably mod it, but it looks like it's a good game. I would buy this. There's a lot to it, too. It's actually really cool. Once the spaceship was fully assembled, I went to give it a name. But what to name it? Something that is definitely the big funny. No. I consulted the world map, zoomed into West Africa, into Burkina Faso, and to its capital, Ouagadougou. <laughs> Immense. <laughs> Burkina Faso is actually a very interesting one that's been in the news the past couple of years. That's a very interesting 
study. Because like you know, I like I thought like thought about traveling, so that's places that like hey, these are restricted for travel have come into my feed. There's actually Once a lot more countries. Mule, we placed the craft into a parking orbit, detached the lander, and began the hunt for lots of science. Zoom. Also, the mixing on this is a little loud, but I mean that's fine. Uh, Kubel, not a surprise. Yeah, no, Burkina Faso and a bunch of other countries have popped in my feed. There's there's definitely some places in the world that are very restricted in regards to traveling to, which I mean it's fine. Just think, I don't know. I'd love to travel the world at some point. I just need to get you know things moving first, if that makes sense. Get things going, all that fun stuff. Would love to go to probably go to Europe first, if anything. Japan's on my list too, but I'll probably go to Europe first. I really want to go to Germany. Whoop. I did <laughs> the scream on the mountain was cool. It's it, it's very interesting seeing other people put together contraptions like this in games, like his uh, the boat videos he was doing with the piss laser, right? Excellent video. So I like seeing uh, contra like redstone in Minecraft is magic to me. I don't understand how redstone contraptions work. You have spawners and stuff on the low end, like the redstone is magic. You can't convince me otherwise. I don't know how it works. It is wild. Like you can make what was. Didn't somebody make the entirety of Pokemon Red playable in Minecraft with redstone? Redstone blocks and stuff? Oh, successful landing? I think we're fine to go from here. Monkey. Lots of data was collected, and our fuel was almost depleted. Mm -hmm. We headed back to Ouagadougou, docked, and transferred the science into the lab. Science. After several more months of zooming around the green boy, the research had been completed. In total, we had collected 41,000 science from our mission, but the labs had multiplied this by five, leaving us with an absolutely massive 207,000 yeah. science. In celebration, I get a Kerbal out of the habitation module, who is instantly vaporized by the high-energy neutrons from the fusion engine. Oh. Rip. Rip. I hurried to the R&D <laughs> building and unlocked every technology available, including the warp drives. Oh. <laughs> Our next base will be on the surface of the furthest planet in the Kerbal system. Good old Elu. I've learned from our previous surface-based mistakes and placed everything necessary for the base to function on one vessel. Its name... <laughs> this long boy has the premiere in power generation. Yeah. A literal black hole. And oh. many other important features, like a launch pad, drills, and an ISIU module. The interesting part of this base is how we're bringing it to Elu. You'd expect for a rocket of this size, it would need a massive launch vehicle. But no. No? With our shiny new technologies, yeah. we can condense this vehicle into this power. Mm, it no, uses four antimatter powered jet engines, a massive fusion engine, and the warp drive. There's so much. There's so much power there. So let's launch. I mean, you see how easily it, it, ex it just goes through the atmosphere and exits orbit now, like uh, from what it used to be, right? Like, the design has definitely been refined, and Up as well as... Space, we don't bother getting into orbit. Instead, we begin charging the warp drive, oh. and... Armor. Armor thickness is a stat. The warp drive, yeah. The, sound, the the music track here definitely does uh does do it justice. It, it, yeah, there, there's there's been revisions and refinements to this design. It looks really cool. I couldn't make it. There, there's a lot of thought that was put into this to make this happen in this specific way. 20 minutes later, we've traveled 76 million kilometers, and we're here. Nice. We take it down to a low orbit, and touchdown. In less than a week, we've placed a base on the furthest planet in the solar system. Very nice. In celebration, we build a space station and launch it from our base. Yeah. Incredible. We've pretty much conquered the entire solar system, so naturally, our next destination is... Interstellar, yeah. For our first interstellar voyage, we'll send a lander to plant a flag on the planet's surface. This will need an interstellar transfer stage and a lander with enough delta V to land and return to orbit. For this mm -hmm. job, we've recycled the Ouagadougou lander, remembered to include a ladder, and built the very first interstellar transfer stage. So we I feel like him saying remembered to include a ladder. I feel like he forgot to include a ladder <laughs> and it led to results. Put it on a launcher, name it Shitfart14. Yeah. 
and launch. Uh, as anyone would. Any, anyone doing interstellar travel would, I feel, would name it that or something similar. It, it, it's just a shit post. It's fine. <laughs> it's perfect. Once in space, we charge up the warp drive and. Massive, massive boost of speed. I like that uh, you have the the hyperspace sickness uh, from Star Wars. This was old. This was Legends, where you stare out and you'll get sick looking into hyperspace. I always thought it was soothing, and that's also tech actually what Vader thought it was in Universe Two. I don't know. I guess I'm just built different, built weird. Hyperspace was always just comforting. Yeah, the horrors of hyperspace, Kip. Don't worry about it. It's fine. Maybe. Here we are, boys. Proxima Centauri. And our small exoplanet, Proxima Centauri B. We detach the lander and fly it down to the surface. He's gonna stick that landing. Maybe. It's also a little loud in my ears as well. So I'm kind of trying to adjust the audio for me. I actually sneezed at the exact moment that happened. That was wild. Oh no. Oh no. So that didn't go to plan. <laughs> oh, yes, he dropped on POV. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh, it was Kevin. He has become the warlord of the system. <laughs> Episode four is going to be wild. Oh my god, it's it's going to be wild. Wild of warships. <laughs> world of boat if you will that was excellent i i love going back through seeing uh martin's science because it reminds me of my days when i actually was decent in school but uh just didn't didn't quite ever do anything with it <laughs> what were your thoughts are you excited for episode four are you excited for uh uh kevin and the return of kevin uh what are your thoughts on ksp did you build anything to that level or beyond let me know in the comments section and i will see you in the next